Let's hit this button and start the show officially. Borino with you because it is a month of September. That's a month of a listing rock star. That's a month of getting listings. And the reason for that is because we're going to be rolling out probably one of my favorite and I think most impactful systems. The Listing Presentation Plus 2.0, the second version is coming out this month. So I'm going to devote this time that we're going to spend together to help you become better at getting more listings, getting better listings, helping more sellers getting paid, becoming a real estate listing rock star. Cool. So whatever questions you have, whatever I can help you with on this journey, where we're going to talk about getting listings, getting more listings and those you have getting them sold, please let me know. Just post here in comments. I'll be happy to address, answer. This is a training session. This is a practical session. All right, so let's get started. Rock and roll. Shante, good to see you. Hey, Jerry, nice to have you on the broadcast. Good to have you guys. All right, so here's what we're going to start with. Before I'm going to give you some tools and some resources, I'm going to give you a test. Let's talk about why in the world do you need to focus on listings? Why is it so important? Why not just pick up a couple of buyers, sell them something over the weekend, get paid, be done? There are four reasons, four important reasons. Number one, the most important one out of that, it's time. Time. It is a finite resource. You know, I recently been going through some challenging times. My mom's health has not been as great, although she's getting better now. She's actually shooting a television show tomorrow, which I'm really happy about. My mom sings and performs. She's awesome. But she was in a hospital for a few days. And it made me think, you can always make more money. You can always buy another car. You can always get another house. You can always rebuild your business. But we just don't have that much time. It is the finite resource. And sometimes we treat it so flamboyant as if we have unlimited amount of it. You don't. I don't. Nobody knows how much more we have. And the problem working with buyers is, you're going to invest insane, huge amount of time until, and hopefully you sell them something and there's no guarantee and then you're going to sell them something anyway. But if you add up the amount of hours an average agent, and you're not the average agent, I'm banking on that, but the amount of time an average agent puts into finding that buyer, qualifying that buyer, chauffeuring them around weekend after weekend after weekend, then finally after 50 homes, they find one that they like enough to hesitantly offer 50,000 below asking price where you go, what the hell, how are we going to ever put this deal together? And you go back and forth, back and forth. Then you lose a the deal. Then they go through another deal. Then you lose that one. Then there is a problem. They're going to wait a month. Then they're back in your car the next weekend where you could be with your family doing other things. You're showing them property because you already invested so much time. So you're throwing good time after bad time. Add up all those days. Add up all those hours. And if you're really honest, and I've done this research with some of you, my students, who actually track the amount of time. You're going to end up with 150, sometimes 200 hours, sometimes 300 hours invested before the deal closes and you get paid. That's crazy. So if your average commission is, let's say, $10,000, you divide it by 300. Well, let's do that. I want to know the exact number. So 10,000 divide it into 300 hours invested, you made 33 bucks an hour. But more importantly, you lost all the opportunities to help all these sellers where you can make way more, be more cool, helpful, and enjoy more time off where the life is balanced. So the number one reason is time. Number two is control, control. See, you have no control whether the buyer is even going to show up whether they're going to write the offer at the reasonable price, whether the deal is going to close, whether they're going to even pick the right house, ever. Or you invest 100, 150, 200 hours working with them, months sometimes, and then buy with somebody else. All that happened to me. That's the only reason I know how this works is because I'm speaking from experience. You don't control the buyer situation. You can't. And at the end, it is not about you and being helpful. It's about them finding the right house. And if somebody else finds them a best deal, better deal, what they perceive, better home, they're done with you. They may still like you, but you can have all the buyer's agency signed, all the contracts. They may tell you all these things, how they like you, and they only will buy through you. 
I've heard it so many times. I got burned so many times. You don't have control. You've been there, right? Every single way. If you've been in a real estate for more than a week, you experience that. And the worst uh, uh, advice new agents get is go find some buyers, sell them something. So now you have a first time buyer who's never bought a house. Now you have an agent who never sold a house. You put those two together, of course, that's going to be a disaster. Number three, it's impossible to scale. It's impossible to scale. You cannot actively work 10, 15 buyers by yourself, make a lot of money, be successful and have a life. It's impossible. The most you can do if you're a real rock star is probably three, maybe four at the time. But that's it. You're going to hit the ceiling. You cannot scale it beyond that. Where a good listing agent, a rock star listing agent, today I'm going to give you some practical tips and a test how you can become that and where you're lacking. You can do 10 listings. You can have 10 active listings on the market, 10 good listings, and you can keep scaling that. Yes, later you have to build a team of support, maybe a good executive assistant, maybe a customer support person. But I know agents personally who do 100 deals, mostly listings, with just a small staff, not teams. They're the only licensed agent on that team. They have a transaction coordinator, customer service coordinator, assistant. You can't do that with buyers. It's impossible. And the number four, you're going to make more money as a listing agent. Every single student of mine, every single agent, whether they have my systems and you guys are my PATH students or not, every, look around. Every agent, no exception, who makes 200000 300000 500000 a million dollars a year. Majority of that business comes from listings. It's a better business model, more manageable, more scalable, more fun. Because you're in control. Not completely, not always. Granted, I had some idiot sellers too. But overall, if you want to really scale this business, if you really want to structure it as a system where you don't just hope for a deal, you don't just do hope, 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 buy, 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 buy. No. If you want to run it as a business where you're the CEO, and if you say, today, I'm going to come up with a plan to make $200,000 in the next 12 months. That's doable. That's realistic. It's possible. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's doable. You focus on listings. The cool thing is, Good listings will naturally attract good buyers. So you can double end some transactions. You can help some sellers where they need to sell first and you sell them something else. All that is doable. But your focus, your effort is strictly focused on good listings. Today, I'm going to show you where to start if your business is not at least 80% listings. You're asking for trouble. And not to mention, you've heard those rumors and all that fuzz going around about buyer's agent, buyer agency, buyer's commissions now being publicly displayed and all that. Guess what? This only going to benefit those who know how to be a rock star listing agent. Would you like to get the secrets? I'm going to share them with you. All right. Is that helpful so far? Is this making sense? I need to sell you on this concept first before we go into the techniques and technicalities and mechanics of it. You need to be convinced that in order for you to really reach. Now, if you want to make 100,000, a few deals here and there. Yes, you will do that with buyers. And if you're willing to sacrifice the time and your sanity, that's fine. But I have a feeling you're here right now because you deep inside already know there's got to be a better way. All right, so let me show you. Here's what we're going to do, guys. Grab a piece of paper, seriously. Do it right now. Get a piece of paper. I'm going to give you a quick test. You first, in order for you to get to point B, like we went on a beautiful family trip over the weekend, a lovely place called Warm Springs, Virginia, just gorgeous, rolling hills, absolutely spectacular. How did we get there? Simple. I punched in the address into my GPS in my Benz. My Benz took two points. This is where we are. Here is where we're going. This is the path. Same thing here. In order for you to reach that level of a good listing agent where you're taking comfortably two, three, four good listings a month or whatever your goal is, First, you need to know where you are. So we'll do that right now. Get a piece of paper, write this down. Please do this. Don't be just entertained. Don't just listen to my voice while doing 17 other things. Come here for a few minutes and I promise you, you this is going to be an eye opener for you. All right, so you ready? So let's do this. Get a piece of paper. I'm going to ask you some questions and I would like you to give yourself a score from one to five. Five being the highest total rock star. One being the lowest. You need to know where you are. So let's do this. Write down first thing. 
where would you rate yourself as a lead generation expert? From one to five. And I want you to evaluate two parts to it. How consistent is your lead generation and how good the quality of the lead is. In other words, volume and their motivation, quantity and quality. Where are you on the scale of one to five? Be honest. Write it down. Write down the number. Be honest. Got it? Next. How good of a follow-up expert are you? Do you have a good system, consistent system? How many appointments can you get with your leads? And how soon? What is your conversion? Out of 10 leads that you have in your follow-up, how many of those will end up being your listings or at least get an appointment with them? Be honest. And here is another important factor. How many of those leads that you have right now list with somebody else? Be honest. Put down the number one through five. Next, how good of a marketing and pricing expert are you? How good are you at determining the right list price for your listings? How well do you understand the factors that influence it? Noise, school districts, all that. Where are you? One to five. Write it down. Next, are you a communication and presentation expert? What is your closing ratio between going on a listing appointment and getting a good listing. Out of 10 appointments you go on, how many end up being your good listings? How well can you handle objections, build trust? If you're not getting at least eight listings out of 10 appointments, you're leaving boatload of money and opportunities on the table. I will help you fix it this whole month. This is what we're going to focus on. I will give you some practical tips. And of course, if you want to come on board, get the presentation plus 2.0 when we're ready to roll it out. You're going to get a book in the mail. You're going to get coaching videos. All that will break it down into systems. But for now, where are you? One to five on communication and presentation. Have you ever recorded your presentation? How good is it? Next, real estate marketing expert. That means how well do you know contracts? How well can you get your listing sold? Are you good at getting your property sold? Do you know how to market them well? Negotiations and then getting them closed. Where are you? Be honest. Now I want you to add it all up. What do you have? Pretty good eye opener, isn't it? How are you doing? Some of you may probably not like the numbers very much, but you need to know, you need to know what do I need to focus on? Where is my strength? And more importantly, what do I need to fix? Because if any of these is a problem area for you, that's where you're losing money, that's where you're losing opportunities. That's the bad news. The good news is you can fix that with my help, without my help, doesn't matter. But you need to know where the problem is. You cannot fix a problem you're not aware of. This simple score strategy will immediately indicate where the problems are. So let me tell you, rock stars score 24 or better. Full score is 25. Your competition, if there is, if there is one or several agents getting listings consistently, it is because they're scoring 22 or better. Where are you? What is your score? Where are you? Landon would like to know if we're past students, will we get the listing presentation 2.0? Absolutely, yes. Yes, you'll be the first ones to get your hands on it. If you have the first one, there's a small fee to upgrade. If you haven't received it yet, it's coming as part of the sequence, totally. I'm excited to teach you all that stuff. All right, so where are you? You know, thanks for being honest, it's a 10, good. Wherever you score three, or God forbid two or one, that's an immediate red flag. That's an instant red flag. That's an instant problem area. Wherever you score three, four, three, two, or one. Four is good. Ideally, you're shooting for five. Because remember, your competition is scoring about 22. Rock stars who dominate an area score 24. Now, every one of these areas I showed you, every one of these, you can improve. It's a set of skills. What I teach you guys is not some esoteric, new age concepts, not something I picked up from books. It's systems broken down into steps, tools, and resources. It comes in three parts. You need to have the right tools. That's number one. So for example, having a good slide deck for your listing presentation that's engaging, that's interesting, that gets the seller on your side is a good tool. Number two, having the right information. That means this is what this slide means. There is a slide, for example, a little girl in front of a giant haystack. 
It's part of the presentation plus. You knowing why that slide is there is important. So you have the tool, for example, the presentation plus, or the resume that comes with it, all that stuff. Number two, you have the information. And there's number three, you have the skill. That means you know how to put the information you have. A lot of what I teach you, especially in the presentation plus, is based on influence psychology. That's the information part. And now you have the skill. In other words, it's like a hammer. You have the tool and you know how to use it. You have the tools, you know how to use them. That's where the skill comes in. Not just the information. Knowing how to drive is very different from being a good driver. Knowing how a car works is one thing. Knowing how to sit there comfortably and driving safely is a different thing. Are you with me on that? Is this helpful? Is it important for you to know where your most important trouble areas are? Shouldn't take you long to start improving on those. If you're hurting, if you're not earning the income you need to or want to earn, if you're getting beat by other agents, if listings are slipping through your fingers, or if you just sit there and go, oh, where do I start to begin with? This seems very overwhelming, which is how I felt. Like there were other agents in my area, skilled, good agents, some of them in the business for many years. They got this game down and I couldn't outspend them. I didn't have the money. I couldn't out-team them. I didn't have the people. I couldn't out-sell them. I didn't have the closing techniques. I didn't have the scripts. I wasn't as aggressive, pushy, to, to, to grab the listings. You with me? So what I had to figure out is what are the elements? And these are the elements. Where are you? And where do you need to start? So today we're going to start part one of this session will be all about focusing on the right leads. Because without the leads, you can have the best listing presentation, the most robust follow-up, but if there's nothing in the pipeline, it doesn't matter. Does it make sense? Tracy, I appreciate what you're saying, Tracy. She says, oh my God, I have a lot of red flags, 13. You need to know that, Tracy. You know what I mean? You need to be aware because now we can build on it. Now, if you and I work together, if you come on do the path with me or get the presentation plus, or you can do this on your own. You start asking yourself, well, what do we need to focus on first? Where is the trouble area? And what is it within that trouble area where I need to focus on first? And I can tell you guys, I've been at this for over 20 years. I've trained thousands of you. Some of you have gone on to become amazing rock stars, which are, that really inspires me more than anything. It starts with good lead generation systems. Now, here is the usual, traditional, ineffective approach. Average agent, not you, average agent over there, will start gathering information and he will say, I need to learn how to do this. I need to perfect my systems. I need to work on my resume. I need to work. And they will have a list. And for the next six months, they think they're busy perfecting until they go out and do it. What I would recommend is you do both. You improve the information, learn stuff. You perfect the skill using that information or the tool while you're doing it. Don't wait until it's perfect because that perfect will never come. Why? Because the industry is changing. The consumer is changing. The market is changing. Your competition is changing. So what may be perfect today, it's going to be obsolete soon anyway. So for you to invest too much time just doing the theory because it's safe, it's comfortable, and it sucks being rejected and lose listings is ineffective. Does that make sense? Are you with me on this? So build it as you go. Improve it as you go. Do your best today and tomorrow you're going to get better. All right? So now let's talk about the lead generation system because that's where it all starts. In order for you to be a good listing rock star, you need to have good listing rock star uh, systems that generate listings. Is this helpful so far? I know I'm moving fast, but we got a lot to do, a lot to cover. And I'm glad that the test kind of opened your eyes. That was the idea behind it. All right. Todd says the areas I need to focus on is lead generation and follow up. That is not surprising, Todd. Yes. That is not surprising. Victor says, good morning, sir. Thank you for all the great info. Great. It's helpful. Thanks for the feedback. Hey, Anna, good morning to you as well. All right. So now you know which areas you're going to focus on. All of these could probably use some improvement. So here's what you need to do. If you change the color on you, slight different change, okay? we're going to keep it very entertaining in all full HD colors. So the first order of business, build four active, 
active. Active is not spelled with an L. Active. Seller lead generation funnels. For active seller lead gen funnels. You need to have four active seller lead generation funnels. If you don't, your business is in trouble. If you don't, you're going to be clobbered by your competition. If you don't, you may not be here next year. And I don't mean to scare you. That's just a reality. I've been around for 20 years. That's exactly what I see. The pattern is always the same. The agents who fall out are usually because they don't have four systems generating predictably seller leads. They usually fuck around with buyers or they just kind of meander. They become jack of all trades, but they never master one. You don't need to master 15, 20 lead generation systems. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on Facebook. None of that is necessary. Build four core active lead generation funnels. Now, what I mean by active is this. There are passive and active systems that generate leads. Active is where you take active role. If I put a big billboard by the highway, that's a passive advertising. You've seen those giant billboards, right? Call Jim if you want to sell your house. It's safe. There's no rejection. There is no, no work, no effort, but it's costly. The problem, it's passive. That means Jim, the advertiser, the agent, has no direct control who's going to see it, how are they going to react to it, how are they going to respond, and how many are going to call. So the problem around that is you cannot build a business model around it. You see the problem? And there are many passive advertising systems that work on this principle. Now, if you start scaling them and improving and tweaking with the right investment and the right resources and information, some of them can be very profitable. But they're passive. And especially if you don't have a large budget or a whole lot of time to tweak and experiment and test. And a lot of these ads need to be tested because even the biggest gurus like my man, my mentor, Mr. Frank Kern would tell you, half the time, we just don't know what's going to work. Most of the time. And this is a guy who spends hundreds of thousands of dollars a day in marketing and advertising. So build active funnels where you take active role. Here's the trade-off. I'm trading the time and I'm trading the dollars for work. Rather than me investing a lot of time and testing and spending hundreds and thousands and thousands of dollars, I invest effort. I still need the skill, but I put work in. That means if you're not afraid to roll up your skills, the sleeves and go to work, build active funnels. Now, ask yourself this. I want to be good at generating seller leads. Where do I start? My recommendation is start with sellers who are easy to find. You see, if you go randomly through a neighborhood, which I used to do, I used to door knock the city of Whittier and I knocked it twice. I did like 80,000 homes in a matter of a year and a half or something. I don't remember the exact stats. It's a big ass city. I wore out four pair of shoes doing that. It is not that it's ineffective. It works. You get to talk to people, get to know the neighborhoods and all that, but you're going to go through a lot of random homes and talk to a lot of random people who have no desire to move or will be ready two, three years from now. I'm not interested in that. So keep asking yourself a question. Well, okay, if I need a seller right now, where do I start? Who can I identify right now? So my recommendation, friends, is if you really want to become a listing rock star, is set up four funnels that predictably generate seller leads. Where would I start right now? You put a gun to my head and says, Borino, you need to get a listing in seven days or less. What would I do? First thing I would do is I would fire up a lead generation system data provider, something like Vulcan 7 or Espresso Agent, and I would get new and old expired listings. Why? Because the sellers have been identified for me. Because I'm already talking rather than random strangers or random leads on the internet, I'm talking to somebody who at one point said, you know what, Martha, we're going to sell our house, we're going to find us an agent, we're going to interview those agents, we're going to sign with one, and we'll see what happens. They already demonstrated through their behavior that they want to move. Those are my leads. Those are my prospects. I have a better chance to convert 10 expired leads than 10, some 10 random leads. Are you with me? Doesn't make, this is just common sense. Think about it. So new expired, old expired. I would start with that. Go talk to maybe five every day. Totally doable. Second funnel for sell by owners. Same reason. I can go on Craigslist. I can go on Zillow or I can use another provider like I mentioned, Espresso or any of these who can get me Fizzboss every day. So I just get on the phone, have a little conversation with them preview the house, start building trust and connection with them. Why is that important? Data. Because out of 10 for sale by owners on the market, national average, seven end up listing with an agent. I have good odds. I'll take those odds. 
You with me? So I build a second funnel. Third funnel. This is a no-brainer. Referrals. Start with your neighborhood. Help your neighbors. Why not? That's an easy one. You have a trust. You have connection. You have some familiarity. If you don't know your neighbors, start there. This is a perfect time. Go do some barbecue. Invite your neighbors. Go meet them. Talk to them. When you see them on the street, engage them in a conversation. That's really the cool thing about the active approach. A lot of it is just based on your ability to have a conversation. That's it. That's one of the most important skills you can develop with all these beautiful tools and all the gadgets and all the technology we have. It's still a people business. Real estate is still a people business. That's why in no foreseeable future we're going to get clobbered by internet or big companies because it's a people business. It's not a commodity business. See, the travel industry got clobbered by internet. The insurance industry are clobbered by the internet. Mortgage industry is going to get clobbered by the internet because a lot of it can be automated. A lot of it will be done by machines. A house in the foreseeable future, unlike car or a commodity, cannot just be sold online. There needs to be that human element. You are needed. And in order for you to position yourself as not a salesperson schlepping a product, but an advisor, a guide, you master conversations. You notice that on that list I showed you earlier, there was a part, how good is your communication and presentation? That's vital. So that's part three. I build my referrals. And part four, I would do one good open house every weekend. Ah! But Borino, didn't you just say that you shouldn't be working with buyers, that this is all about listings? That's exactly what I said. But I also said I would like people who come to me rather than me going through a bunch of random people, random leads, random neighborhoods, hoping and praying, I'm going to target. So, statistics. These are mine, yours are very different, of course. My statistics, if I do a good open house, which everybody can, I get 20 people. Out of those 20 people, I have two what I call target leads, high probability target leads. And those are people who either need to sell, sellers, or buy and sell. In other words, they have to sell something first before they can buy something else. Those are my primo leads, primo targets. Those are the people I'm after. These are the funnels you need. These are inexpensive. You're not going to spend thousands of dollars on these. A lot of the conversions here are pretty quick. I mean, I had expired listings where I walked in. I would talk to the seller. We really hit it off. You know how you sometimes click with somebody? We would chat. And I'm like, these people need to move. They clearly got screwed by their previous agent who didn't do a very good job. Overpriced the property. Granted, that was probably the seller's fault. But the seller still needs to sell. I know how to help them. Let's build some connection and trust. Half an hour later, we'd be sitting in the kitchen table. They'd be asking me like, well, what do we do next? What's our next step? You can have a listing. You can have a listing that day. I'm not saying it happens always. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but it's possible. When was the last time you listed an online lead that day? You can do something with that, like with fizzballs. Yes, many times the repetition is necessary. Follow-up is important. We're going to talk about follow-up on our next session. But sometimes you can get lucky. I have better odds here than I have with online leads or direct mail leads or any other leads. These are good leads. Yes, you need a system, communication, some persistence, patience, little thick skin. I give you that, but that's real estate. Referrals, you're dealing with mostly with people who already know you, who like you, who trust you, you have a relationship with them. Build on that. If you have 200 people in your database as your sphere, past clients, current clients, your neighbors, friends, your spouse's friends, relatives, uh, connections you have through past work or your children and all that, that's a beautiful network worth a lot of money. Open house. And then you can add another funnel if you want, but this would keep you plenty of busy. The trick is this, friends. You need to work this daily and diligently, systematically. That's the secret. Daily, diligently, and systematically. That means you know the steps. You know what it takes. I call the expired listing first. I text them, I email them, I hit them on social media, I start a mailing campaign to them, I visit them. Those are the steps. That's a system. Rather than sitting there Monday morning going, hmm, I wonder what I should do with this lead. No. Take out all the thinking. Build a system. Then improve it. Version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? What do you say? Yes? Hansel, you have a great question. What is the best way to follow up besides asking for if they're ready to lose. Excellent question. Not something I can answer within the next few minutes. I have a separate session. Oops. 
in case you forgot who I am, there's my name. <laughs> I will have a separate session where we'll just tackle the follow-up because it's connected to becoming a good listing agent. Why? Because as you, and you will learn this in the presentation plus when you come on board, is a lot of the work, the pre-selling, and I use the word loosely, you know what I mean, I'm not too big on selling, but a lot of the heavy lifting will be done during your follow-up. That's the beautiful thing. With deploying the right communication strategies and the right marketing, by the time you sit down with the seller, your positioning has been already established, which it's already happening by default, but what we're going to do is take control over that process. And I'll show you how that's done. And a big chunk of that will be done during the first impression plus follow-up. Because if you do those steps right, you're more than halfway there. And the listing presentation will actually be the easiest part. Because the pre-selling, the pre-indoctrination, that you are the right choice, you are the advisor, you are their guide, has been done for you. You will just reinforce that, confirm that, get the listing signed during the presentation. Yes? Jody, well, thank you for that. You're amazing. My first live. Thank you. Well, great to have you. Eric, great stuff, coach. Excellent. Build your pipeline, Tracy and Andreas. Tracy, follow up and, of course, compare apples to apples. Tracy says, oh, let me pull that up. That's a good comment, Tracy. We are in Florida, major hurricane state right now, and folks don't want to sell. Thoughts? Tracy, very good point. I was in California for many years, as you know. I lived there for 20, 25, 26 years. There, there were no hurricanes, there were earthquakes, there were fires, there's always something. And as much as my heart goes out for you guys, there will always be something, Tracy. But I can also tell you is that there will always be people who need to move. Maybe some will move because they say, well, fuck this, we're done with this hurricane nonsense. We're moving, we're out of here. But there will always be people who will need your help. Yes, things will dip a little during a national disaster like this one, of course. There will be some time for you to realign and get back. But it's going to get back to normal. It's going to be business as usual. Why? Because people are getting married, people are getting divorced, people are getting job transfers, people need a bigger house, people need a smaller house, people want to get out of the flood zone, people want this, people want that. And given that there will be over 5 million transactions this year in the US, there will be plenty of people in Florida, in your area, who pretty soon, if not right now, are looking for a good agent. A lot of it has to do more with your mindset than with the circumstances. Because there will always circumstances. If you're looking for reasons why this wouldn't work, why a hurricane will kill your business, you will find those reasons. I'm here to tell you, you can do business in spite of all that. I'm not pretending it's easy. I never said this was easy, you know what I mean? But it's doable and it can be very profitable. So it shifts the mindset from this cannot be done to what do I have to do to find people who need my help? And yes, wait it out, of course, do the safe stuff, do the reasonable thing. But after that, I promise you that with the right systems in place, with the right funnels, you're going to find plenty of people who will need your help. No question about it. And it's being done every day. And I will illustrate with a story. I always believe that there is time where nobody buys or sells real estate. That is just dead. Until I found a client who contacted me on Christmas Day said, we found the perfect house. And I know it's Christmas Day, and I know you're probably not working, but we'd love for you to help us. And because the requests were so genuine, even though I tell you, don't work with buyers, I sold a house on Christmas Day. I did. So, common sense, no. There was opportunity there. And it wasn't because I was greedy or I needed the commission. It was more about they had so much urgency and such a need and because they did find a perfect house and lost on a couple others prior to that, we put the deal together and I felt really good and I gave them a nice Christmas gift and so they, did, they gave me a nice Christmas gift back. So the point of my story is there's plenty of business around you. There are plenty of people who need your advice, your help, who will be looking up to you for guidance through using these systems. Now, of course, you can get my system. I have an expired system you can buy or if you want it, it's part of the path. I have a FISBO system. I have a referral system. It's all there, open house system, all of that. It just, it's going to take you longer to kind of figure out what works, what doesn't. From me, you just get it kind of copy-paste and it's ready to go. It's all part of the path. Now, the path, as you guys know, is my coaching program. That's this. Go check it out. It's goborino.com. One by one, you get all the systems, including the new Presentation Plus that we're rolling out later this month. You're going to get that. You can, of course, just buy it if you want. It's up to you. But here's the most important takeaway. You did the test with me in those five areas. You now know what you need to focus on. Wherever the breakdown occurs, patch that hole, fix it, build on it. In order for you to make 200, 300, 400,000, 500,000, a million in the next 12 months, which you can, 
You can. These are the areas you must focus on. Build the systems, get the information, and develop the skill. That's the combination. Now there's a four part to it. There's a fourth element to it. That's the foundation on which everything stands. That's the foundation that the house is built on. And that's your mindset. You see with the mindset, this is not gonna work. It's hard to get business. Nobody wants to move. My competition is better at this shit than I am. With that mindset, you're setting yourself up. And again, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from hard experience I experienced in my life. And I'm not going to go into the details of the story, but the point was two years into real estate, I was homeless. I was living in a car, literally living in a car. I was sleeping in my Cadillac. Not because I wasn't working hard, not because I wasn't prospecting mindset. But you need those four things in place because even with the right mindset, if you don't have the right system, it's not going to work. Even with the right mindset and the right system, if you don't have the right information, it's going to be tough. And even with the right mindset, the right information and the right systems, if you don't apply it, if you don't build the skill that you need to build, that would be like having this fancy machine, this beautiful machine that can do amazing thing. If you don't know how to use it, you're not going to pull that off. But. I'm going to leave you with this. If this guy from Czechoslovakia figured it out, became a listing rock star, you can too. Every single one of you can. It's a set of skills. It doesn't require talent. This is not a question of talent. This is a question of skill. Having the tools plus skill. Information, skill, execution. Está bien? All right. Okay. People in Florida have short memories, says Pamela. I totally agree with that. Everywhere, pretty much. Why? Because we got to move on. We have to move on. Understood. So, in other words, use the hurricane as a weapon then for them sell fast and the highest price. I wouldn't say weapon. I don't want to fear monger people and I, wanna, I don't want to exploit the situation because the, these are dire circumstances, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... There'll be people who will need your help. There'll be people who will need your advice. There'll be people who will move. And pretty soon, when this blows over, there'll be people who want to move in. That's just how it is. People move in and out all the time. I saw it in California, Northridge, big earthquake hit, huge. A lot of devastations, fatalities. It was sad. There's still the city. There are still people moving in and out. That's just how it is. That's the truth about many of these areas. It's sad and it's um, unfortunate, but it's the reality. That's just what it is. So what you need to ask yourself is who needs my help? How can I help them? These are people who need your help. There are expired listings who try to sell, who will try again, who will need a good agent. So check your MLS stats. There are for sale by owners who think we're going to save commission who are sadly mistaken. Why? We have the stats. We know that at the end, they're going to sell with an agent. You can be that agent. There are referrals. There are people who already know you. They just need to know that they can trust you, that you're competent enough who will get the job done. And there are people who will come to your open house, not because they're curious about the color of the carpet, but because they need help, they need information, they need guidance. You can be that agent who can help them. It's totally within your reach, okay? Tracy has a question. I send out direct mail, just don't want my letters to get lost because of Dorian. I would wait, of course. Yeah, wait a few days. Andrew says, text, email, direct mail, and video are the tools. Build your pipeline. Absolutely. Multi-channel approach. That's what the Expert Plus and the Fisborino is built on. Use all the channels of communication. If you just rely on one, you're limiting yourself. Just like you don't necessarily respond to all the channels, there may be some that resonate with you more than others. Everybody's the same. So it may be a postcard for this seller. It may be a letter for this one. It may be a video for this one. It may be email or text or personal face-to-face -face conversation. It just depends. And because you don't know right up front which one will hit and resonate, you need to deploy them all. That's the best way to do it. Yes? Melody has a good question. It's one of the most often questions, uh, often asked questions I get. What is a good CRM for agents? I would recommend three you should look into. We're going to talk about CRM and follow-up and mechanics and tools on our next session because that's the second part of the sequence. First, you need to have good, good tools to generate leads for your CRM. Because even the best CRM is not worth bupkis if you have five leads, you know what I mean? But the best ones, look, there, there's a whole bunch. And I don't get paid by them. I want to make that clear. But there are several I recommend. Go check out, see which one works the best for you within your budget and the tools. But the ones I recommend is LionDesk. LionDesk, good system. I know uh, P. 
people who run it personally. Good people, solid system. So go check it out. Lion Desk, Realty Juggler, Realty Juggler, very inexpensive, good, robust system. And if you have the money for it, follow up boss. Those are the three. Now, there are a million others, but start with these three, see which one you like the best. All right. Tracy says, thank you for the advice and push. You're welcome, Tracy. You got this. And I know it's discouraging and I understand that these kind of events like the hurricanes, earthquakes and all that can damper the spirit. I get it. I totally get it. Not just in you, but of course in the community. I totally get it. It's a devastation. But at the end, we all deal with shit. We all deal with situations that are not ideal. We all deal with problems, not the size of a hurricane, of course, but big problems, big issues. So to ask and hope that for it to be perfect, that's not going to happen. You already know that. You're not naive, you're smart. How will you react to it? How, how quickly you're able to get back up, dust yourself off, shake it off and say, well, that was not the most fun thing I've had, but let's keep going. Who needs my help? Where do I find them? How can I serve them? How can I help them? Yeah? How can I help you? How can I serve you? The best way I know how is for you to come aboard. Come do the path. You'll get the tools, you get the answers, you get the resources, you'll get the information, you get the new presentation plus too. All of that. Come join us. Go check it out. It's goborino.com is the URL. See if that's something that would help you. Because I will help you with the mindset. I will help you with the systems. I will help you with implementation, communication, all those things. How bad do you want it? My job is to help you. Okay? Mike would like to know, is this every day? Almost every day, Mike. I usually post it on a calendar. Some of it depends on what other coaching. Like tomorrow, we're going to have a private session. If you join the path, you will be on it. We're going to be doing role play sessions, handling objections. So tomorrow, there'll be no live here. But after that, there will be another one. We do these often. Okay? All right. Yosef says, Coach, what's our good sources of data for expireds and FISBOs? Good question, Yosef. If you have the budget for it, good source for FISBOs and expireds is Espresso Agent. If you use the code BORINO, B-O-R-I-N-O, uh, they will give you a $29 30-day trial. So you can try it for a month for $29. Bucks. The code is BORINO for Espresso Agent. That's a good, robust system. Works really well. Many of you like it. Use it. The second one you might want to look into, if you have the money for it, it's not cheap. It's expensive, but it works really well, is Vulcan 7. Less expensive, but still pretty good and robust would be Redex, Land Voice, and Sales Dialers. So check these out. See which one you, you like the best. Okay, helpful? These will provide the expireds and for sell by owners for you daily. It's pretty good stuff. Hansel would like to know, when is part two? Part two is scheduled. Let me pull up my calendar. That's a really good question. I should have had this ready. Part two will be Thursday. Thursday, 1 p.m. Thursday, 1 p.m., part two, and then part three, part four. I divide into several areas so we can cover that. All right? So with that, you know what your area is, where you need to focus on. Start there. But I would recommend evaluate. Do you have four funnels that repeatedly, predictably generate your leads? The answer is not really. Do that. Do that. Start building simple steps. Where do I find these leads? How do I approach them? Where do I find expireds? Now, you can just go on MLS. You don't need a data provider. If you have the money for it, remember your competition is using it. Even the playing field, sign up for Espresso or any of these. Where do I find for sell by owners? How do I approach them? Same thing. Where do I find more people for my sphere? Start with your neighborhood. That's a no-brainer. How can I do a good open house? Those are good questions. They will start leading you down the right path. Yeah, helpful? All right, my friends. Is there one that combines the CRM lead information system? That's a good question, Cafetero. Uh, a lot of these have a lead generation system slash CRM built into it. There's one problem with it. We'll talk more about this on our follow-up session, but you want all your leads in one database. Everybody. Whether it's your expired leads, for sale by owner leads, your referrals, your sphere, your open house leads, they should all be in one place. So you can manage it from one place. So you can do campaigns from one place rather than have it scattered all over the place. So that's why you need to have a data system like Espresso or any of these. And then you have to have a CRM. But we'll talk more 
about follow-up, which systems, how to follow up, how to become a listing rock star by having a robust follow-up, why that's an important part of the sequence. Why agents who think, well, I'm going to convince them when I sit down with them on a presentation are starting way too late and why you can beat them just by having a robust, solid follow-up. But that's for the next session. Until then, Coach Borino signing off. Jump on the path. We'd love to have you. And if you have questions, of course, reach out. Let me know. Thanks for being here today, rock stars. For those who are in Florida and in the path of this crazy hurricane, please be safe. Stay safe. Go get some business. There are plenty of people who need your help. I'm here to help you find those people, connect with them, help them get paid so we can repeat it all over. All right, guys. Have a terrific Tuesday. Coach Borino signing off. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody.